Hi Bot Builders! This is Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor on the TV show BattleBots. And this is episode 5 of Witch Doctor Jr. Made possible by Send Cut Send. Today we're going to learn about batteries and chargers. In episode 4, we learn how to assemble your robot, including mounting motors, wheels, and armor. We also make sure that your electronics are held in place away from any spinning parts on your robot. We're almost ready to turn the robot on, but first we need to charge the batteries. Now these batteries are more serious than the batteries you typically use at home, so it's really important to learn how to use them and charge them safely. Charging your battery on the wrong settings can ruin your battery or even start a fire, so let's take the time today to learn how to do it correctly. Before we jump into the settings on your battery charger, let's talk a little bit about the battery itself. Combat robots of all sizes are typically powered by lithium polymer batteries. You may also hear them called LiPo batteries, which is just short for lithium polymer. These lithium polymer batteries have a higher energy density than most rechargeable batteries, which means that they can provide more energy for their weight. These are not the only batteries used in combat robotics, but as you know, we have a strict weight limit and saving weight anywhere you can is a good idea. There are two properties that you need to know about your battery in order to determine the correct charger settings. You need to know the voltage and you need to know the capacity of the battery. We're going to do some quick math to make sure that your battery is adequate to power your robot. First, let's determine the voltage. If your battery has a clear wrap on it like this, you can actually take a look and see the individual cells of the battery. Your kit comes with a two cell battery, so you should be able to see the two cells. You'll notice on the label that it's marked 2S, which means two cells. Each cell has a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts, which means that a two cell battery has a nominal voltage of two times that, or 7.4 volts. Nominals just means that that's the voltage on the label. It can be higher or lower depending on how charged or discharged your battery is. Let's check the actual voltage of our battery right now. This is a voltmeter, which is a tool used to measure voltage. If you don't already have one of these at home, you can get one at your local hardware store for less than $10. You don't need to have one for this build, but it's a useful tool to troubleshoot electrical issues with your robot. I'll place the voltmeter leads on the battery leads to get a reading, black to black and red to red. Right now, it reads 7.8 volts, which is pretty close to nominal. Now that we know more about voltage, let's talk about battery capacity. The capacity of a battery is the amount of power that it can store. The higher the capacity, the longer your battery will be able to power your robot but also the heavier and bigger the battery will be. If we take a look at this label, it shows that the capacity of this battery is 250 milliamp hours. Amp is short for ampere, which is a unit of measurement for current. Remember that current is the flow of electricity. If you want to refresh your memory on electricity, just take a look back at episode three of this video series. Let's calculate how much current the battery can deliver to see if it's a good fit for our electronics. If we take another look at the sticker on the battery, you'll see that it says something like discharge, 45C continuous, 90C burst. Your numbers might be different than mine. This means that your battery can discharge at a rate of 45 times the battery capacity, which we determined before to be 250 milliamp hours. 45 times 250 is 11,250 milliamps, or 11.25 amps. Is this enough to power our robot? If we take a look at our motor specs, which you can find on the Fingertech website, you'll see that each motor can pull a maximum of 1.3 amps, since that is a stall current. Stall means that you're applying full power to the motor while physically keeping the shaft from spinning. Imagine that you're in a pushing match with your opponent, and you have great grip on your wheels so that they can't slip on the floor. You will be applying full power to your motor, but your robot wouldn't be moving forward or backward. This is when it draws the highest current possible. Since we have two motors and each can pull 1.3 amps at stall, that means we can pull a maximum of 2.6 amps. This number is well below the 11.25 amps that our battery can deliver, so this battery has plenty of power for our robot. We still have some capacity left over to add a weapon using the same battery. Now, doesn't this mean that you can use a smaller battery? Well, maybe you can. We just checked that your battery can deliver enough current to power your robot at any given time but we also need to make sure that it can deliver enough power to last the entire match. To calculate your battery life, you'll need to take your battery capacity, which in our case is 250 milliamp hours, and divide it by the current. 
Now the motors won't be pulling their maximum current during the entire match, but we'll still use a stall current here just to be conservative. You don't want to lose because you ran out of battery in the middle of a match. So we already figured that the stall current is 1.3 amps per motor, so 2.6 amps for both motors combined. We need to make sure we use the same units here before we divide, so we'll use 0.2 amp hours instead of 250 milliamp hours. 0.25 amp hours divided by 2.6 is 0.1 hours. We multiply by 60 to get the answer in seconds, and we see that our battery will last at least 6 minutes. So could we use a smaller battery since our matches are only 3 minutes long? You absolutely can, especially if you're tight on weight. However, if you plan to add a weapon in the future and you don't want to buy a new battery, it's nice to know that we already have that capacity built into this battery. It also can get harder to find smaller and smaller batteries if you go really small. Since this robot is not super close on weight, this battery is a good fit for the design. While we're talking about current, let's take a look at the sticker on your drive speed controllers to make sure that they'll work well with the rest of our electronics. The sticker says 36 volt max, 3 amp peak. We know the battery is only 7.4 volts, so we're safe there, since it's way below the 36 volt max rating on the speed controller. We took a look at our motor specs and saw that the stall current is 1.3 amps for each motor, which is well below the 3 amp peak rating on each speed controller, so these will work well together. Okay, now that we understand more about batteries, let's set up your charger. We'll plug it in and turn it on. Most chargers can charge a variety of different types of batteries, so let's make sure it's set to lithium polymer or LiPo. We want to set it to charge. There are a few different modes available here, but right now we want to charge our battery. This number here on the lower left is a charge current. The higher this number is, the faster your battery will charge, but we do need to keep it to a safe value. 0.5 amps is a safe number to use here which is 2C, or 2 times the capacity of the battery. Two types of capacity of our battery, which is 0.25 amp hours, is going to give you the 0.5 amp charge current that we're using here. On the lower right, you see a voltage value, and in parentheses, it shows the number of cells. Make absolutely sure that this matches your battery. Some chargers are smart enough to warn you if this setting is wrong, but not all of them, so don't rely on that. If you set the voltage too high, the charger will still try to push that voltage to the battery, which can damage the battery or even start a fire, so pay really close attention to this setting. We know our battery is 7.4 volts from taking a look at the label, so I'll make sure to put 7.4 volts here. You can plug the battery directly to the charger, or you can use a power jack to charge your battery without taking the battery out of your robot. Before you plug in your battery, take a look to make sure it's not physically damaged, and make sure it doesn't look puffy. Charging a damaged battery can be dangerous, so we want to avoid that. Just to be safe, it's a good idea to always charge your battery in a LiPo bag. A bag like this can help if something goes wrong during charging. Some events may even require you to bring your own LiPo bag, so it's a great thing to have either way. You can buy a LiPo bag online or at a hobby shop. If you want to charge your battery while it's inside your robot, just get a LiPo bag that's big enough for your entire robot. Once you double check that your settings are correct, you can start charging your battery by just hitting the start button. Some chargers require that you press and hold start, and then hit start again to confirm. Once your battery is done charging, your charger will sound an alarm to let you know. You can take a look at the screen while it's charging to check on the progress. There's a timer that lets you know how long the battery has been charging, and it also tells you here on the lower right how much capacity it has put into the battery. This number in the middle shows the current that it's currently charging at, which should match the current that you set it to. As the battery gets full, it's normal for this number to drop a bit. On the top right, you see the current voltage of the battery. A charged battery should read 4.2 volts per cell, so this battery should read 8.4 volts when it's fully charged. It's normal for the fully charged voltage to be higher than the labeled voltage of 7.4 volts. And here on the left side you see that it's set to LiPo 2S, which is the right setting for our battery. You'll notice that we have some additional wires coming out of the battery. 
This is called a balance tab. It has one wire for each battery cell and a black wire for ground. Since your battery has multiple cells, we want to make sure that the voltage of each cell is the same. Before and after each event, it's a good idea to balance charge your battery. You can do this by plugging your battery into the charger as usual, and then also plugging in the balance tab. Your charger should have an input similar to this where you can plug it in. Then, instead of setting the charger to charge, you'll set it to balance. You can double check your other settings as usual and then start your charge. It takes a little longer to charge your battery this way, and you don't have to do it every single time, but it does help your battery last longer. It's important not to damage your LiPo batteries by overcharging them, over discharging them, overheating them, or crushing or piercing them. Since you can damage your LiPo battery by discharging it too far, it's important while you're practicing driving that you don't drive your robot until it stops moving from a depleted battery. Each cell should read no lower than 3 volts. Since you're using a 2 cell battery, the total battery voltage should be no lower than 6 volts. You can check this with your voltmeter. One way to make sure that you don't discharge your battery too far is to set a timer when you practice driving at home to make sure that you remember to charge your battery at the right time. We calculated that your battery should last at least 6 minutes, so you can set your timer to 6 minutes. You can also buy a low voltage alarm that will display the voltage and sound an alarm when it's time to recharge. Fingertex sells these, or you can buy them from a local hobby shop. They're very inexpensive, and it can save your battery. Just make sure not to leave the voltage alarm in your robot for the competition, since it would add some weight. It's easy to avoid damaging your battery at home while you're practicing, but during a battle, it's always possible that your battery may get hit. Events should always have a fire extinguisher to put out any fires, and a sand bucket to place a damaged battery in. If you need to dispose of a battery at home, make sure to look up the proper procedure in your city. You may have to take it to a battery disposal location. I would like to thank Send Cut Send for making this video possible. Over the last few videos, we've gone through the process of ordering your own custom robot parts from Sencut Sense website. Now that we uploaded our file and chose our material and thickness, let's take a look at the pricing. There's a minimum of $29 per material, so you might as well get $29 worth if you're not adding anything else to your cart. Setup minimums like this are really common in manufacturing, and this is actually the lowest I've seen. I'll get six of these parts so that I have some spares to repair the robot in between battles. Once I pick my quantity, I'll just click add to cart, and now we're ready to check out. Your custom parts will ship out to you in three business days or less to make sure that you're ready for your next event. Thank you for supporting this video, Send Cut Send. Once your battery is charged, it's time to turn your robot on for the first time. In the next episode, I'll show you the proper power sequence, how to test your robot safely, and even some troubleshooting tips, just in case everything doesn't work perfectly the first time. If you have questions on any part of the build so far, leave them in the comments below. I'll see you at episode six, where we'll turn the robot on for its first functional test. Until then, happy building.